Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work, and I'm just doing a quick video on this. Um, basically, a first impressions on a knife I have in for sharpening. I obviously didn't use it, but I did sharpen it. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but I'm about to mail it out, so I wanted to do a quick video on it. I got to mail this back, and then the Patreon, uh, they're the winner to the Patreon giveaway this month. Uh, speaking of that... <laughs> See how I busted that in there? We have this month's Patreon giveaway right here for December. So, and if you already have one of these, I do have a supplement knife, uh, basically equal value, pretty much, at least almost. Um, so, if you want to get involved in monthly giveaways, become a Patreon for Needs Knives. You're a fool if you don't. So, let's get into this Wee Knife 604L. The 604L is the one with this blade shape. This one does come in different blade shapes, this model. Uh, very cool, S35VN. It has like a dragon scale titanium handle. It's not an integral, it is a sandwich, but it looks uh, very integral-like. Um, it is a frame lock, obviously, titanium clip. Now this is the older model with the proprietary hardware, but they do send the bit for it. Now, sharpening it, the owner, we talked about putting a, a fine edge on it, possibly a polished edge, if it was possible, and I did try, I actually did put a polished edge on it, but it lost all of its bite. And one, it's S35VN, and two, I, I didn't lay the edge back. If I would have laid the edge back, then yeah, um, I could have put a polished edge on there. Now, the edge I put on there is pretty much fine, maybe a little bit under fine. Um, because of the thickness of this blade, this is a pretty thick blade. I mean, it's, it's very thick. But besides that, it's very thick behind the edge. 20,000, or it's a little over 20 thousands right here, 25 thousands, 30 thousands. So it can go anywhere from 20 to 30 thousands behind the edge, and it gets thick quick. It's not even the big deal of the thickness behind the edge in this case. It is just very thick in here, like in the middle. Like it gets so thick so quick and even behind the tip. Now this blade shape is a very, very useful. It's an extremely useful blade shape. The tip, you can use the tip very good and it's got these swedges right here that add to the strength. It's almost like a beak the the tip of the blade and since it adds so much strength behind the tip you can use this tip with a lot of pressure without chipping it or you know breaking it now um that that adds really that, or that's really useful when you're needing to do precision cuts and stuff like that you're going to be able to put a lot of weight behind the tip of this knife so very useful tip and then the belly right here the recurve when you're cutting and slicing it's basically going to trap material behind right here behind the belly when slicing and then obviously you have the belly for belly cuts so very useful blade shape but it is a little bit set up for harder use, a little bit harder use than I feel like the knife is set up for. I feel like they could have went a little slicier or with a hollow grind because that's why I didn't lay the edge back because it would have looked ridiculous being as thick as this thing gets, you know, being 30 thousandths behind the edge and then getting really thick as quick as it does. The edge bevel would have looked ridiculous on this thing if I would have laid the edge back. So I basically just followed the same factory angle they had and yeah. And then like I said, I did polish it and then I dropped it back down. It is a um, a very sharp edge, but it could be a lot sharper if the angle was laid back, you know, yada, yada, yada. But still a very, very useful blade or very, very sharp um, edge and it'll work just fine. Um, the the action on this thing after putting kpl on this thing whoo this thing has amazing action um you can push button it but it's set up more for a light switch and this flipper tab is about as good as a flipper tab gets love this flipper tab the finger placement is really nice it's very very comfortable and it just rockets out i mean this thing has look at this drop this thing is very smooth. 
the access to the lock bar, very easy. And it's always past the detent ball. The detent ball is very early. It's right there. It doesn't have a detent ramp, but it really doesn't need one because when you unlock it, it's always past the detent ball. It's just amazing action. You can reverse flick it, but it's not easy. A lot of people are not going to be able to do that. It's very tight inside there, but if you can get your finger in there, you can do it. Thumb flicking it, it's not going to happen. It's just too tight. It's not It's not going to happen. Um, the Ergos, very nice. This dragon scale texture or dragon skin, whatever you want to call it, scale, whatever. It's very nice in the hand. It adds a little bit of grip. And then the neutral grip it has, I love this type of grip. It's super neutral. You can basically put it in any position you want, and it's very comfortable. Um, yeah, great ergos. The jimping doesn't work at all. The jimping is just not sharp. So really doesn't matter whether it's there or not. You know, it doesn't really do anything. Um, the landing zone is uh it's not really chamfered for the landing zone for when you flip it but it's very comfortable still in place basically you land back here so it's not a big deal the coating on the blade um you know i can't say whether or not how good it is hopefully it's a dlc because this is a 250 dollar knife like i said they do come in other blade shapes i don't know if i said that or not but it does come in other blade shapes so you don't have to get the the you know the recurve you can get a tanto and i'm not sure if they have other blade shapes or not but this one um you know i wish the sharpening toil was a little bit better um and also I, I, you know, with, with coating, you know, that's just something that you sign up for when you get a coated knife that when you use it, you're going to end up wearing it. You know, it's going to start showing wear and scratches and stuff like that. Not that big of a deal. That's something you basically sign up for when you get a knife like this. Let's zoom into this edge really quick and take a quick peek at the grit um, as much as we can because it's very hard to get edges on camera. Uh, you can see the grip pattern very nicely. Now, the tips that does not match up perfectly from one side to the other. It's really close, though. Not that big of a deal. But, um, come on. There we go. But the grip pattern looks very nicely, nice and consistent. And angled very nicely. And it's angled in a position that I think would be better for this recurve now. Since it's actually angled towards what you're cutting. So, yeah. Very useful blade shape. I really do like this blade shape. Even with the recurve. It's just going to work for lots of tasks for EDC. Which I do like. There's a lot of cool things about this knife. I just, man. If it wasn't so thick behind the edge. It would just benefit this knife so, so much. I mean, one, it would be a lot sharper. Like, it would just go into material so much easier. But not just that. It would pass through materials easier and then another thing you'd be able to lay the edge back just a little bit farther without it looking ridiculous because you know that being a very tall blade to start off with you don't want a bevel that's you know a lot of the blade so but it is what it is and it is set up for a little bit harder use like i said i just don't think that the knife is really that kind of knife because even looking at the stop pin i mean the stop pin's a decent size i'm not saying it's not a decent size if you can see it in there it's a decent size stop <laughs> it's a decent size stop pin but regardless it's a badass knife. It really is cool. Um, I'm glad I got to check it out. I'm glad I got to sharpen it. Um, and yeah, if you guys ever need any sharpening services, uh, let me know. And uh, yeah, we'll get your knife sharpened up for you for a very low price, a low, low price. I love the coloring on this thing, though. It does look really good. And, um, I, and a lot of people don't like the proprietary hardware. I'm happy that they send a bit with it. Um, I don't know... I'm sure it works just fine, and, you know, I don't really care about that, but a lot of people did not like that. I do prefer T8s, and just, or not just T8s, but 
torque spits. Yeah, I think torque spits just around the board. They're a lot easier to deal with, you know, and use this. I like when knives use the same hardware so I don't have to sit there and switch bits. It's really nice when they just use one standard, uh, like T8, T10, something like that. Um, it has the integral look, which probably adds a little bit of strength to it, seeing as how it's just a sandwich construction. Now, the one thing, I'm guessing it's only held in there by the pivot. And possibly this screw down here. Because if you notice, there's no hardware. There's no hardware. All you have is the pivot and that. So this sandwich construction is pretty cool. It um, feels very solid. There is a lot of weight reliefing inside there. Um, you probably can't see it because it's so dark in there, but this is milled out heavily. So it is a very, for how big the knife is, it's very light. And this is a, almost a 9-inch knife. I think it's like 8.8 .8 inches with a 3.8-inch blade. So it's almost a 4-inch blade. It's a good size knife. Um, you can see it next to the Hogue Ritter. It's definitely a little bit bigger than the Hogue Ritter. So... Yeah, very cool. I do like the you know the build how they did this. I'm guessing this this bit is what seals the back end and then the pivot up here, and they just fit this nice and tight. So very very cool, very unique, and we does amazing fit and finish, amazing action, and even though this is one of their older knives, they were still doing incredible. Uh, incredible work back then. Awesome, awesome knife. Peace.